balance which really would then reduce the Balcluth award and maybe drop it down to three um, councillors rather than four. Um, just looking at the, the percentages here, I'm not sure how many people live in Stirling. So it's Stirling in the Bruce Ward? No, Stirling's in the Balcluth yeah. award. Our Pluth is currently under the uh, allocated, the, the average. Yep. Sure, we'll make it less. We'll take our Pluth down to three, three councillors. I'm not sure what the numbers are. But the second lead thing I want to say to everybody is that since I've been on the council, wards that have community boards seem to get more done or seem to be closer to the people uh, than wards that don't have community boards. And my thought would be that to divide the total area up to get less, more people per elected representative that have Community boards and like Balclutha and Milton and, and other areas where the councillors can do what they do and where there's community boards work with community boards, you got ears close to the ground and and you get better feedback and less people around this table, but more input from the community to the table. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your yeah. Honor, sorry, can I just make a point to Councillor Barron, that from your first point around like taking Stirling's population and putting it with Kotangata, the options that are on the table are just modelling. So they are they're just one example that could be done. Um, the options that Jim and Doug have come up with is just an example of. Correct. So yes, anything that. could be on the table yeah. depending on the directive that you use. So that one we, we can certainly look into two how that would affect these arrangements. Um, so that potentially could bring Katanga Tamato into compliance. Um, I guess the issue there would Bruce Ward would still be over. Um, but there are different ways we can we can explore this. So as I was just Councillor Mackey followed by Luna. So this is a dumb question, part one of it. Um, so this um, the reshuffle is that's been driven by central government. Statue. Statue. Because like, if, whether we have 14 councillors or nine, the same amount of money is allocated as distributed amongst different councillors. Yeah. Um, so what's, why are we doing this? Because legislation requires that we do address this every six years. And this is the opportunity, as councillor said, is we could look at our 14 councillors and say, look, there's too many. We want to go down to nine. And this is a guide, guide that we need to put here. Um, and then we can look at wards and things like that. So this is the opportunity. It's not central government driven, it's legislative driven. But we've got a community board in Clinton that we've just got going again, but it's not officially recognised as, you know, so it's not costing the ratepayer any, it's just us, you know, we give our time up and we're doing stuff, some stuff. You know, like the community boards that are in um, over Tapanui, where they work really well. They do, you know, for, and, and I agree, and perhaps, there would be a community board involved, say, probably in Milton. Um, we could have had a few less discussions lately. So, um, yeah, going forward, you know, like every week community wants to be represented. To go and to go and say to a community all of a sudden, oh, sorry, but you're you losing your representative. Um, they're not going to like that, are they? I actually find that <coughs> bring going around the district, uh, Kai Promotions, we're well, holding looking forward to Waco. It, a lot of the groups are the go-to, and when it comes time for annual plan or they come to talk to us, the credence that we hold the go-to group, I wouldn't make any difference in credence of group between the whole Looking Forward and the Lawrence Community Board. They're both the community's champions that we, <coughs> we trust. But at the moment, there's only been two groups that have, two, two areas that have said they wanted it, and the other towns have found them, it's mainly the personalities and the people involved. 
like Waihaula, go through to Waihaula, they're ruthlessly efficient and positive growth and horses for courses, I suppose, isn't it? I mean, just I'm, remember I'm, also, Your Worship, that we, we almost didn't have a CUNY Board of Lawrence. No? We couldn't get the, the people putting their hands up to be elected. Mm. Uh, we had to do by elections, didn't we? So I go Councillor Ludwin, Councillor Funch, Councillor Mackey. Uh, no, Councillor, you've got a different name. Kathy. Okay, for my part, I personally wouldn't be in favour of any community boards because I think we've got all the community groups and right across the district, KP, oh, just like Ryan said, they're everywhere. Community groups doing the go-to that you, you can do. I mean, even in, yeah, so I'm not in favour of that. Um, but definitely, but I mean, obviously, that's part of the consultation question. But I would definitely be in favour of, as a consultation question, asking a different option of a makeup of council sitting right now. So, because um, I, cause I, I don't know that we've really given the community that option. We've always kind of made the decision around the table here that, no, we're going to stick with the 14. Well, why don't we go and ask the community what they want? We've never done that. We've, we've actually made that call here without going to, to consult on that one. So um, give the community a chance to... And as, as to what option you would go to, I'm not sure, but but we are high on numbers around the table at 14, whether you went to 11 or 9. I mean, that's 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 a discussion point, but, you, but 14 is a lot. So, Councillor Finch, follow myself. Thank you. I was going to say much the same because in Melbourne, um, we also have the um, Project Bruce and everything it does, so it's very like a community board. And then we hold a tiring mouth. So we already have three great, great groups to cover our whole area. Um, as for the representation numbers, I think we all bring something different from different communities and different um, ways of dealing with things. And over the years, I've seen how it is really quite good to have that amount of people representing because of those very, very reasons. We're all completely different. We're all unique. And we do bring in different ones. And you find through the community, there's some people that'll go and ring this councillor and they won't ring that one. It's just the way of people and their nature. I would not like to see Ian Milton change. That's just my point of view, not, not preempting, not making um, for when we come to vote or anything, but I know what a lot of people out there would say. So uh, South, Councillor Herbert, Councillor Payne. So possibly I said that we were looking at... Ooh, you were ahead of me. Councillor Catherwood followed by South Herbert Payne. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Hey, just, just a quick question. There's pretty much the mesh blocks. Yeah, mm -hmm. Are they actually determined? Yeah, we, we get this from Stats NZ. So every year um, they review the mesh blocks and provide us with A, the shapes of the updated, updated mesh blocks, where the boundaries are, and the estimated re, uh, resident population of those mesh blocks. Mesh blocks are smallest. So this sounds a little weird. Yeah, the smallest area that you go down to and they basically uh, have an average population so if a population gets too big but then a mesh block they will split the mesh block and create two so that's the life you don't have to go down to mesh block level so, that's, that's so um from my i'm kind of wondering whether we're looking at it from the wrong perspective because for me and, and i know i sort of go around the district and you get it we're all the same this idea that my bunker is different than your bunker and I've got a totally different in space. And actually, what are we trying to achieve? For, for democracy to work at its best, it's meant to reflect the wider spectrum of the community. And yeah, and no disrespect to any of us, I'll, I'll use myself. The system that we've got at the moment is very good at voting me in. Old, male, white. I would love to see a situation where females could be more. Uh, young people 
people um, more marginalised or different groups. We don't have a system that in any way encourages that. <clears throat> I also look at it and we discussed it this morning. I, I do feel a burden of responsibility every time I say, especially to the, you know, the working people here, come on, I want you in, I want you in. And then I'm thinking, what are we paying you? 23000 a year or something, and I'm obliterating your annual leave. I'm messing up your family time. Whereas if we went down, there's got to be an evolution as we move from a 1989 fracture to a cohesive district. We are Koitu. Are we different than Canterbury? Probably are, but are we truly is Sterling different than Kai that's different to Lawrence? I really doubt it. And and if we went down to a more streamlined group of nine, ten, I don't know, something, all of a sudden there's a, a compensation for your time away from work. Well, you're getting paid 45000 that could encourage a young single mother to say, I can have a go at council. And, and you start changing the demographics to truly reflect the cross section of society. I think we've got to look at it for where we would want our district and our democracy to go and try and move grid blocks around and, and get the outcome. I, I know that, that, like, if, hey, let's go out with eight seat will. Yeah, let's, let's just take on more grief. But if we don't actually have the courage to at least consider change, we're locking ourselves in. We've seen in our discussions this morning, when I first came on council, the agenda would have been one booklet about that. Now look at it. The expectations, the degree of scrutiny we're under, the workload, I think we've got to modernise and start looking for fit for purpose. And as I say, I would I would like to see a, a broader cross spectrum of society around this table. No disrespect, but I am the pin up boy for what we produce. I've got to go to somewhere else. I've got to go to Council Heard at the time. Thank you, Rich. Just before we go on to what I was going to talk about, just, just in comment to what you just said. Don't forget a female stood against you in the last election, and in West Otago, three females stood and I did, four people. So we go through a democratic process called an election and the public decide who sits on the table. So those people had a chance to, you know, so they all stood. But I don't want to labour on the, on the, there's been a bit of talk just in the last couple of minutes about community boards and then community groups around those things. But they're not the same. They're no, quite different. Thinking. Remember, the community boards go through an election process. So every three years, the people in that particular ward get to choose who's there. The other option is people that want to be there or for whatever reason they've got a particular axe to grind on a community group. The other thing is community groups can't rate for anything. The community board can. Well, they have funding available and they can rate for things. So they're quite separate things. Councillor Herbert. Thank you, Councillor Herbert. Ditto. Yep, um, Councillor Cattle. Just a quick one for you, Dale. I suppose it's, it would be um what would be the what would be the minimum amount? Representation for, for the size of our population, fifth district. Five. In total, would be the minimum. Be between five and twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> the law says all those in favour. <laughs> <laughs> and the, so, so then five to the the funding, the remuneration and stuff. three times your wage yeah. is is uh, that doesn't matter. It's the same with the doesn't matter what the figure 15. is. Yep. And how do they come up with that figure? Well, the remuneration authority has some sort of formulas and research. I don't know. They just come up with the figure for local government as they do for parliament. There's no logic to the formula? Yeah, there, there, there is a logic. Yes. And they publish the logic for it on a range of different things. And they come up with this magic figure. And it has changed over the years as the logic changes and uh, so the current reiteration and iteration um, you know, um, does um, does reflect that um, and um, but you, know, you divide it by the number of counts so i know comparing us with brother they've got a bigger population but we have got more a lower socioeconomic you know, SL rating 
consequently, we got just as squirt more than them, even though they're slightly better. So it's not just population. Oh. Are we ready to go? I just All right. a comment, Your Worship, in response to your comments around getting wider representation. So Ben goes back to his last bullet point. Part of the consideration in the preliminary process is to look at potentially if there is an appetite for a mixed model um, approach. So you can elect wards, but then you can have at large, but elect ben. Yeah, in that example, you could have wards across the district and councillors elected from specific wards. And in addition, you could have some councillors elected at large across the whole district. Um, it's an option that some six councils across the country opted to use. Uh, it's, it's there and it can be explored. A good example is Kapiti Coast District Council it has 10 councillors, seven elected from wards and three elected at large. So, Park. And, and, and the, the risk is that the three at large could come from the same district? Correct. But that doesn't often happen now because it's often been said, well, the biggest town would dominate. But you exhaust your votes when you get your one person in and then, then it doesn't. Numerically, it doesn't actually work out that the biggest town gets three and swamps. It can. It can. Councillor Grant. So, so on that one, the ones at large come from the populated area? or No, they can. They, can, they are yeah. voted in by the So why, why would you have... Some in wards and then some at large. Then it's just what particular councils prefer. They think is better. They think that the at large councillors have a district wide view rather than more so than a ward councillor who may have a more ward focused view. And it was often seen as a stepping stone. It was one step too far just to go down to at large. Fifty percent mixture. Hmm. Just can't see that. Thank you. Well, anyway, so um, I won't dwell too much on some of these options, but we did look into the possibility of moving some mesh blocks from Bruce to Tangata Mato. Um, these are the green ones here within that thick red line um, as part of the Bruce Ward. Now, whether or not those five mesh blocks make sense to move into the Katanga Mato um, Ward, something that we'll be looking to you and to the community feedback to understand if that is actually suitable. Um, this option here doesn't address the non-compliance in West Otago. Uh, it is still slightly underpopulated, um, but there are different ways to make it compliant. Any one of those mesh blocks in the Clinton Ward uh, just south of West Otago could potentially be moved into West Otago if, um, if any one or more of them were appropriate. Um, there are other ways to do it, so, yeah. Um, other option, which Dale mentioned earlier, which was to simply combine these two non-compliant wards um, on the eastern part of the district. Um, it's another case of you're the elect elected members and you know the district, so we want to hear from you whether or not this is an appropriate option. Um, it might, might not be at all. I suppose it's one way that Toko get a decent hooky story. <laughs> if we had to go to this ideology, <laughs> would it be fair to say that instead of going Milton Kaitankata, that it would be the Kaitankata Sterling Kaka point? We've already got that circle of rating interest of Pluto Sterling Kaka point Kaitankata. Would that be a more, because I was thinking what you said that you shop and gather will. A person from Kaitanga that goes to South Otago High School, whereas a person from like Hola doesn't. Um, they shop in Balkhoita, they shop in, well, my Hola might shop in Moscow, I don't know, but if we, on the on the criteria, probably a better gridding or gathering would be Kai, Sterling, Balkhoita, Kakapun. Don't know. Bruce, yeah, that doesn't address. Uh, Bruce Ward one, does it? No. And I tend to think that <coughs> probably the Kai Bruce Ward is far more compatible than trying to integrate Kai with any part of Belcluth. <laughs> Why would you say that? Just like 
Okay. Let's just open. <laughs> I uh, wanted to point out here that um, there were some other options that were researched at the last review. Um, three or four of them, only one made it to the initial proposal, but I just stick up here a couple of the other options for a point of comparison. Um, this option here would have had nine councillors from three wards, one from that little Milton ward, uh, two from the Balcluth ward, and the rest six elected from across the whole district, the giant green rural ward. Uh, this option didn't go anywhere beyond uh, being researched, but I wanted to bring it up just for a point of comparison. Can we just dwell on that? When I actually look at that, does a, does a rural person in Harriet think different than a rural person in Bruce or you know, maybe there's some... No, but you know what I mean, John, is the more... Is that actually the next step forward that we could take? But you could potentially, oh, hold on a minute, you could potentially get no representation from West Otago for all six people to decide where it is. And I don't want that, and they don't want that, not only if you're in table. But it could potentially happen, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. Councillor Martin. <laughs> Through you, <laughs> Chair, um, I'll refer back to the good work that the Clutha Development Board have done with the social research and evaluation document. I'd, Sure, you would have read it since well, I last brought it up about it. And it just highlights in here every community is different. Look at the, our community plans. We've got that too. But everyone is specifically different. I don't know where you get the assumption by having less is more where it comes from because. Every one of those wards up there is completely different. And have a good read of this document. It tells you some of the issues that is going on in the Clutha district. Not just isolated to each ward, but the district as a whole. We have some problems. And I think we need to be listening to the people out there. I'll leave it on top of the desk here in case someone wants to have a wee read. It's all highlighted what's wrong. So would you say there's nuances or differences? Differences. Hmm. Right, so everyone's got different cultural values. Is, is that the document that doesn't include COD? Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 60 pages or whatever uh, doesn't include the third largest township in the district, which is ironically large number. But it doesn't include it, it doesn't mention it. So, well, much weight, yeah, we, we should. <laughs> should read it. You should read it. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that once every six years, we've got the, an opportunity to put the rigor to consider every single option. That's what we're doing here today. So we've got to put the squeeze on somewhere. And if all we can do is go back to the status quo, I put it to you, John. You've just said that there are some issues. You don't get changed without making changes. That's right. But you've got to listen to the people to recognise the issues. Right, another option um, that was proposed last time and, and didn't go anywhere was to have nine councillors from four wards. Um, here they are up on the screen. We haven't looked into whether or not this or the previous um, arrangements would be compliant. You can if you'd like us to. Um, another thing I want to mention here is that this is only nine ward councillors, so there is the option to include one or more councillors elected at large in addition. You could have one, two, three, or four, or five. Um, it wouldn't affect the, not the fair representation rule. Um, so this is just one of the other options that was looked into last time, uh, but ultimately was not part of the initial proposal. Um, with that, Dale wanted to oh, I'll carry on. Um, community boards, so the reviewers, we've said, must consider um, whether community boards are retained, modified, established or disestablished, um, how many there are, what the boundaries are, how many members are elected uh, for each community board. And it was mentioned in the, in the determination from the Local Government Commission because there was one appeal, one appeal, um, and the, the Commission did explain that the Council should at the next review further consider the place of community boards in the district? Is it appropriate that they only cover two parts of the district or should there be community boards covering?
covering the whole district. So what are the other options uh, in mind? Is there anything else in the room that you'd like us to look into? So you said they're covering the rest of the district, but couldn't we get one more community board and if, if the community of whatever wanted it, it's so not the whole. Yeah. So what's, what's the thoughts, team? What are we rolling the dice on? I mean, we're not asking you for um, a preference at this point because we're yet to go out for the, um, the pre-consultation engagement. Ah, yes, right. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, that's important to remember. What would you like to ask us around? Yeah. 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 Councillor uh, Simon, and then John. Yeah. Um, yeah, through your worship, could you possibly look at, a, at another option? Chopping up the wards again, maybe to work nine or ten councillors. So keeping them still quite regional. Maybe just having nine or ten councillors. Well, how many wards? The same number, eight. Not necessarily. No. Oh, well, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> well, just a few more than the um, than the four wards. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. yeah so this option here was four councillors from a lower Clutho ward and then two from a northern ward, uh, one from West Otago, and one from a southern ward. It's not far away. Yeah, the, 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 it may still be the best option, but it could possibly still, 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 still tweak that, maybe to have five or yeah. like three wards. That six, yeah. Four, yeah. <laughs> three wards, I don't know. Just, just give us an idea what it might look like. Yeah. Is that the yeah, the blue world can get split in half and have one councillor and two councillors. Got the same yeah, outcome. Just a few. Yeah. Anyone else got something? Go on. Just a, whatever we go out with, I think it needs to be really <laughs> well explained. That just if you go for less councillors, doesn't mean it's going to cost less to fund the council. Because if, if the current environment we live in, people are you know slashing everything and burning everything, if you like. Uh, if they think we're going to go from fourteen to nine, we're going to save. You know, each percent of our rates on civic, that's not the case. It needs to be clearly explained that it's going to cost the same just to buy it up. And we also clearly need to state the community boards that are only funded by the community. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right Is there any, anything else that we wish to add? I will say for my part that I, I think we're missing a chance to not reflect the broader cross-sections of community. Uh, we're going to have to have the courage to change to get change at some point. And I would really love to see a change in demographic around our table for female, vulnerable, younger, the like. Yeah. So we'll work with Natasha to try and work through some of those issues that you've raised into our questions in the preliminary consultation and make sure we get the questions right so that when we go out we can get we can get some good feedback for you because we'll be providing that feedback for you to make a decision on your initial proposal. So looking at, looking at the timetable, um, we're at the council workshop first one today. We're looking at preliminary consultation for the balance of this month uh, in all of May. So we're giving it about a month or six weeks. We're then looking at having a further workshop uh, on the 20th of June. With that, we'll, we will be bringing back uh, summaries of the preliminary consultation for consideration, some further options based on that uh, consultation uh, and come back with you for some options so that you can give us a steer. Remember, you can only have one initial proposal. So you may go out with three or four on your minds, or you may debate three or four, but you must land on one. And that is the um, initial proposal. And we're looking at making that as a formal resolution on the 25th of July. So that's just the rubber stamping, if you like. All the work should have been done prior to that, most likely on that 20th of June workshop where the, the guts of it is going to be debated. We then uh, do a um, public notice of that uh, initial proposal. We have a one-month submission period looking at 1st of, of August to the 2nd of September. 
uh, and then we're looking at um, once submissions close, summarising those submissions and then having a hearing here where the council will be out with inviting the submitters in to present their case. We're looking at then a, a further workshop to um, discuss those submissions and really coming up to the view is do we want to retain the or uphold the initial proposal or do we want to change the initial proposal following hearing of the submissions to reflect a final proposal. That again is a uh, formal uh, council resolution and we're looking at the 24th of October for that date. Once we have a, a uh, final proposal, again, we have a public notice and again, we have another month of what we call objection or appeal um, period where people can then have a further say formally and if we just get one objection or appeal, it all goes off the commission. So there's no further hearings or anything like that by this council. The local government commission will take that over and, and deal with that. Likewise, if we do not do anything with the... Um, uh, West Otago. Yeah, West Otago. If we don't do anything with that and it's still outside the plus or minus 10%, even though it's 19 people, it goes off to the commission. Now, the Commission may well say, look, it's so few people, you're going to break up a community, we'll keep it together outside the plus or minus 10%, but that's the decision. Dale, am I right? I think from memory, let's say that the West Otago one wasn't addressed, so the Commissioners came in <coughs> for that reason. Once they come in, they can look at the scope of the entire company. So they can go, oh, let's just forget about West Otago, and we're over here doing... Uh, you're now five councillors at large. They can no, have... no um, <coughs> redress or anything. Once that door's open, it's right open. They can do that, but what they do is look at the whole picture. They look at what did council do in consultation, what debate was there was, what was the submission vein of the submission, all that sort of thing. They take into consideration. Uh, what's the statutory <coughs> bits that had to be done and the date that had to be done by? All right, so we must make a resolution on the initial proposal no later than the 31st of July. So we're going right to the wire there pretty much on the 25th. There's no, no leeway to, for that. We can't push anything out. We must make our um, final proposal by the 20th of December, so we do have a, little, <coughs> a couple of months there for that process, but there are certain periods within process um, that we can play around with your submission period and appeal period for example must be no less than uh, one month so we can have a longer period if we wanted to uh, but we um, that, so those are the fixed dates 31st of July and 20th of December nothing much happening between now and 25th of July <laughs> Kenny thank you your worship so I'm just I'm sitting here thinking does, does the legislation ever get looked at because I'm thinking uh, from where I sit it's uh, a line in the sand doesn't stop anybody from ringing me up. It's a, it's a person they know. They ring me if they're in West Otago, Patangata, Milton, wherever. And I'm just wondering how often the legislation actually gets a bit of a review, and if it ever does. Well, strangely enough, it actually got a bit of a kick, a bit of a refresh last September, oh. where some of these dates were reviewed, primarily driven by um, local government commission, where they actually had struggled to deliver. They, have, under legislation, have to uh, have the, all determinations finalised by the 10th of April next year prior to the elections. And what they've asked for and received in, in legislative change last year is to bring in all the dates forward by a month. So previously we had the 31st of August to have our initial proposal. Now that's the 31st of July. And they've pulled everything back a month, really to give them a bit more time. But um, yeah, it's still achievable what has been... Um, yeah. Okay, anything else? Back to you, Dale. Okay, last slide. Um, next step, I mean, confirm a plan for informal preliminary engagement. I think that's still a work in progress. Uh, I think we we'll probably agree that we need to just finalise a few more questions and get those right before it goes out to make sure we're asking the right questions. Um, we then undertake that informal preliminary engagement. Okay, I'll just add a point to that, because obviously we're in a point where we're about to go out for for the long-term plan, so just acknowledging that it is a busy time and we're expecting a lot of engagement from the community. So we're going to try and push that out as far as we can. We don't the want to over-consult. Um, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. put that consultation. 
So we have yeah, a so it's not confusing. The community um, just around what's being asked with the long term plan. So it'll, it'll be going out at the conclusion of with the LTP. Um, sort of rounding up. So we'll basically have the month of May. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a little bit of time just to finalise all those questions so that we get them right. And that's really important to get those right. And then on the 20th of June, we'll meet again and we'll present a summary of that feedback, a summary of some uh, other options uh, that have fallen out from this discussion, put it all together in another presentation so that you guys can then debate it and give us a steer. What do you want to do as the initial proposal? One option. Yep. And then on the 25th of July, that is the formal uh, council, council meeting to the formal initial proposal. And that's it from me. Are there any other questions? You've been great in asking questions as we've gone. Um, yeah, I've got one, Dale. Just, uh, just sort of check them. I know that we've already given a directive on Mary Ward, but just around uh, commissioners coming in and the like, <coughs> did we do preliminary engagement or engagement with exclusively Naitahu, or did we engage with Iwi Marin? Because there's obviously different dynamics. I think from memory it was, uh, Steve, you might be able to correct me, I think it was Naitahu and another group. Okay. Yeah. So we did it. When we, could that be something that would be open <coughs> to um, commission? No, they're quite separate. So you do your electoral system, and then you do your Maori wards, yes or no. Once those decisions are made, you then move on to your representation review. So what was the decision that came out last week? That okay, I can talk about that. Or I can talk about that. So it's the local electoral Maori wards and constituency bill. It's a coalition government policy. And basically, for those councils that have established Maori wards or constituencies, uh, under the proposed bill, they can either resolve to disestablish Maori wards in August, so the bill won't become operative until the end of July, so they can choose to disestablish those. Or if you have Māori wards or constituencies and you do not want to disestablish them, then you must hold a poll with the local body elections next year. So any establishment of Māori wards going forward must be as a result of a public poll. That's so... Doesn't impact on us. No, it doesn't impact on us, but it will impact on our nation. You know, yes. To me, it's despicable. So the so a, a non Maori could uh, could hold on. No, you don't even get your five percent. Yes. Basically, at large, everyone votes. If it's fifty one percent against, it, that's it. The, it's gone. Yeah. Stated. So the poll provisions are being reinstated. They were removed in twenty twenty one. They are being reinstated, where five percent of electors can demand a poll be held from the council. And that will be from 2025. So those provisions are being reinstated. There's also some slight um, tweaking to the election timetable, um, which you may be interested in. Basically, we're uh, extending the voting period by another 10 days. So there's two timetable changes, and that's really to compensate the uh, New Zealand Post issue, um, where the polling, where the voting period is going to go from 22 and a half days to 32 and a half days. And we're also extending the uh, delivery period for, for voting packs uh, from six days to 14 days, simply because they can't be delivered now within six days. So there are two fundamental changes to that timetable, just for your interest. Okay, interesting, um, um, Councillor Kendi. Uh, when we um, shift the blocks, which I know we've done before, do people get, because... We're from the deep south. You, you, you protect your area, and that's sorry when you, you know, <laughs> then they turn around to a name change, or you shift them from, say, which has happened, from one area to the next. And then sometimes that area is rated different because of something else that's gone on in that area. So now I've got to pick that up. Do we get the pushback from people? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Um, because they, they don't get a choice, do they? Well, it, it, well, yes, they do, because it comes back to your education, your public communications, and that sort of thing. That these are the reasons why we're changing things. And this is the process going forward. So here's what we are proposing. 
you have a submission period, so you can make submissions on this. If you don't like it, tell us, okay? And the council, we have a hearings process, so the councillors can hear, and then they can either take account of that submission or they don't. Oh, so it still comes round to this table. Comes round to this table, yeah. Okay, Tina, we've lost the questions. Can I just, sorry, can I just sorry, add to that, which was what you're trying to look at is what would be the least <coughs> in terms of options to the community. So one option we did look at, which we didn't table, was moving the mesh blocks. I, um, I understand. Lawrence to a picket, yeah. but like it's less. Like there's less changes less if you're impact. changing to boundaries. So there's less like impact on you're looking at what's the impact on the people that you're moving. Um. You can do the whole thing. You can you can take away all internal boundaries and clean slate and say, okay, we're gonna start again, we're gonna start afresh. So that's one extreme. The other extreme is that we can simply just nudge uh, a boundary. Right, we'll always be Western Target, even when they chuck us in the side. <laughs> it'll always be WA. Right, team, enough of this discussion. We've uh, thank you very much, Dale and Ben, for assisting us with that. We're going to break for a smoker, so if you have got 10 minutes up your sleeve, you're more than welcome to join us. Grab a cup and there might be more questions. Guys, we're probably going to chuck it along because we still have a fair bit in front of us. So. Uh, 22, 22.